And hello, it is Friday, and that means it is time for our Lunch and Learn. Now, one of the things that we want to do today is we want to talk about meditation, and we're going to talk about how meditation can change and repair your DNA, which is awesome because your DNA is what you are born with as we age, as we uh, take on other things into our bodies, our DNA can become damaged. And so uh, this report is about how meditation and meditative practices can actually heal and repair our DNA. So this is really good because guess what? Viruses, vaccines, food additives, ultraviolet light, and environmental toxins all damage our DNA. And so most of the time people think that, well, once your DNA is damaged, it's just done. There's nothing that you can do about it. But there are plenty of studies that we're going to talk about today that show that when you meditate, and especially if you do extended med meditation, it can absolutely change and repair your DNA. So this is really, really good. When we sleep, you may know that your body repairs when you sleep. Your brain uh, deals with things. Uh, if you have problems going on, you may, you know, come to an answer. That's why we get the old adage, let me just sleep on it and I'll give you an answer tomorrow. That's because your brain processes while you are sleeping, but it also does DNA repair and cellular repair when you are sleeping. So this is really, really important. So meditation is a practice that you do when you are awake, but it is a form of active rest. Now, when we think of rest, we think, of, oh, I'm going to be comatose on the couch eating bonbons, right? Well, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about uh, mindfulness. We're talking about meditation. It could be walking and meditation. And so we're going to talk about a few of those things today. A lot of people find meditation or mindfulness boring. Well, that might be because you're not doing it correctly. All right. So we're not meditation is not just sitting there and, uh, you know, counting breaths, although breath work is important. We're going to talk about that. But if you don't do uh, meditation correctly, it can be boring. But when you do it correctly, it is not boring. So meditation is a practice that can lead to positive changes in gene expression. We want our genes to work the way that they were designed to work. And when they work in a way that they're not designed to work, this is when we have metabolic diseases. So that is cancer, that is diabetes, uh, chronic kidney disease. All of those things are metabolic diseases. Obesity is a metabolic disease. And so when you are able to do your meditation and do it effectively, you're able to have correct gene expression. So meditation is a practice that involves sitting in stillness without thinking or engaging in simple movements. It originated from traditional culture and has since evolved into various exercises, including mindfulness meditation. The primary Objectives of this practice include regulating the mind, eliminating distractions, promoting calm and positive thoughts, and finding inner peace and serenity. And don't we all just need that right now? Okay. We need to have positive thoughts. We need to be able to control our mind. We need to be able to calm all of the uh, aggressive things that are going on in my mind. So we are here in the Houston area. If you have been aware any at all in the past three weeks, we've had tons and tons of rain, tons and tons of flooding. And so it's real easy to get into that thought pattern. Oh, are we going to flood? Oh, how long is it going to rain? Oh, who are my friends are flooding? Oh, what can we do to stop this? Or, oh, can I get out of my neighborhood? All of those kind of racing thoughts that we can't do anything about because they're all the what ifs. When you practice mindfulness, when you practice meditation, you're able to calm that down and you're able to uh, be in a place where your uh, DNA can repair. So by meditating regularly, we actually help our bodies repair the DNA and the gene expression. So in a 2020 systemic review, it found that both extended and short term meditation can possibly affect, positively affect gene expression, reducing the factors that cause DNA damage, and it can repair the DNA. 
even a one day meditation retreat can switch on genes related to staying healthy and fighting off sickness. But those who spent the day relaxing normally did not show the same DNA changes. Specifically, the study found the pivotal pathways responsible for DNA repair and stability are consistently improved after meditation. So meditation is something that is active. It's not, as I said before, it's not just taking a break. It's not just having a slow day. It is something that you do on purpose to control your thoughts and to manage what's going through your head. Another study suggests that when men integrate meditation and exercise into their daily lifestyle, it may help repair DNA damage to their sperm, increasing sperm motility and embryo viability. This resulted in a reduction of recurrent pregnancy loss in their female partners. Repairing this type of DNA damage is an essential step for healthy offspring. So what this means is that when these men did this meditation and exercise, their sperm got stronger. And because their sperm was stronger, their female partners were able to carry children to term where in the past they hadn't. So this is really, really important if you are a young couple trying to conceive, keep having a miscarriage, uh, or just not have any uh, uh conception at all, this is something that you might want to think about incorporating meditation and exercise to see what you can do. DNA damage is often caused by inflammation, oxidative stress, viral infections, and other toxic insult and medication. Okay, so if you meditate, you're going to be able to help undo some of this damage. A long uh, scale genomic study by the American scientist, that's a magazine, in 2021 showed robust immune system activation following an advanced meditation retreat. The study analyzed the gene expression profile changes of 106 people in an eight day meditative retreat for 10 hours per day. Now, what this means is that eight hours, sorry, eight days, 10 hours a day, they were quiet. They were doing things. They, they had focused meditation. They had certain tasks that they had to do. Talking was not probably one of those, all right, but it showed substantial um, increase in their gene expression. So this is a good thing. The research data indicate that meditation activates 220 genes directly linked with the immune response including 68 genes related to antiviral potency, particularly interferon signaling. So what does this mean? This means that if you meditate and you meditate on a regular basis, that you're able to increase your antiviral gene expression. You're able to increase your interferon production, which means that you're not going to succumb to viruses. Now, I don't know if you're watching the news, but I'm watching the news and there are all these dire predictions about the upcoming new viral season. They haven't really named it, but they say it's going to be absolutely catastrophic. And so if this is something that you are concerned about, then incorporating meditation into your daily practice would be something that would be a good thing to do because the studies have shown that 68 genes are directly related to antiviral potency. The top 10 genes affected are known for their essential role in the type 1 interferon pathway, which is the most relevant to the frontline antiviral immunity. So this is really important. If you want to maintain your health, if you want to stay virus free, then you're going to want to incorporate meditation into your daily practice. Now, back in the day, a few years back when we had the horrible virus that we all know about, um, one of the things that we did here, my family did, is that we consistently uh, took natural antiviral uh, herbs and supplements and that kind of thing. And so we, none of us came down with any kind of sickness or disease and uh, all that kind of good things. We're glad to say that. But what you want to do is keep your immune system in such a happy place that when a virus particle enters into your field, then your immune system is on alert and it just takes care of it before it can get in there and incubate and you can have problems. So the effect on the genes took place quickly. 
nearly 44% of the genes were altered immediately after meditation, followed by 30% at the end of the three-month follow-up. So this is particularly important to note that this study found that meditation improved immune function without uh, triggering inflammatory markers. So why is this important? Well, the body works on a, um, I, I want to say cause and demand. That's not quite exactly the way to put it. Something comes into your field, your body mounts an immune response. When the body mounts an immune response and your immune system kicks in and destroys the pathogen, hopefully. When you meditate, your immune system is strengthened, but you don't have that triggering immune response, which is an inflammatory response. Inflammatory responses drive cholesterol. We don't want to have high cholesterol, and most high cholesterol is due to high inflammatory markers. So there are some genes called self-healing genes, and we all have it, and these genes are activated by classical music. So, listening to classical music, okay, not just any kind of music, classical music is another simple act that has been found to enhance DNA repair. Our DNA is susceptible to frequencies. When we listen to music, not only our ears, but also our muscles, our cells, and our DNA are listening. The music permeates our entire being. As Dr. Carlo Ventura's team stated, listening to music can significantly affect human health and well-being. Here is a quote. A person does not hear sound only through his ears. He hears sounds through every pore of his body. It permeates the entire being and according to its particular influence, either slows or quicken the rhythm of blood circulation, it either wakens or soothes the nervous system, it arouses a person to greater passions, or it calms him by bringing him peace. Now, this is very interesting because I was just now talking to my sister-in-law about the horrible, horrible rains that we had last night, and she said that she could actually feel the vibrational frequencies in their house of the rain, and it was like the floor of the house just started rumbling, and it was because of the frequencies of the wind and the rain, and this uh, report is saying that our whole body responds to frequencies. Now, here in this office, you know that we do bioenergetic testing, and so what are we doing? We are touching your traditional acupressure points. We are getting a read of what your vibrational frequency is, so with your frequency, you're either in a healing uh, band or you're in a disease band. And so one of our goals is to get you into that healing frequency so that your body can do what your body needs to do. This report shows that listening to classical music will also help with that. An experimental 50-minute classical music concert was held on June the 14th, 2022 in Spain. The audience included 60 people with Alzheimer's disease or age-related cognitive disorders and also a healthy control group. The scientists analyzed their gene expression profile pre- and post-music sessions and found that listening to music was linked to a 2.3 times increase in the activity of genes across the entire genome, particularly neurodegradation-related genes in people with age-related cognitive disorders compared with the non-disease group. This increased gene activity was especially seen in genes related to the breakdown of diseased brain cells in Alzheimer's disease, which is a cellular self-healing process. The study was published in 2023 in Scientific Reports, which is a journal within the Nature portfolio. So this is really cool as we all get older and we know that there is a possibility for neurodegeneration. Hopefully not, but there is a possibility. So listening to classical music, I think it said with a 55-minute concert, which that's not a long amount of time, guys, to listen to classical music. And I don't want to hear you say, well, it's not my type. Well, it may not be your type, but it may be something that you need to do in order to repair your DNA as we age the DNA protein changes. That's why we have 
diseases, metabolic diseases. So there's another study which used a group of Finnish scientists and artists, and they conducted a study where they analyzed gene expression of 48 people who listened to classical music and 15 people who listened to nothing. They found that those listening to classical music increased the expression of genes related to dopamine inducing a sense of well-being. One gene supercharged by classical music is the alpha synuclein, and maybe I didn't say that right, which helps keep the dopamine level balanced in our brains, and it is also genetically linked to Parkinson's disease. Another gene, NR3C1, can pump up our dopamine levels, making us happy and hooked on those tunes. So this is really important. I know that as a former teacher, when I was uh, working with my high school students and it was final exam time and they would be a little bit stressed, I would put classical music on in the classroom because I knew that classical music worked with the brain in such a way that it encouraged good recall so they would be able to do well on their test. And it also calms your nerves, which is one of the things that, as we all know, students have test anxiety. And uh, I'll just give you a secret. Teachers have test anxiety, too. And so when we put classical music on, it enhances the uh, neurological genes so you're able to learn better and you're able to recall what you have learned. So that's really, really exciting. Uh, classical music not only heals our brain, but it also may help us live longer. A study conducted by MetLife, you know, the insurance company, from 1956 to 1975 on 437 active and former conductors of symphony orchestras found that their mortality rate was 38% lower than the general population. Translate that into normal language. That means that the conductors lived longer, okay, than the rest of the population. Why is that? Because it is that classical music that stops the DNA uh, degradation there. So for those aged 50 to 59, the death rate was 56% lower, 56% lower, despite being the most stressful decade of their career. So if you want to live long, if you want to live strong, you might want to incorporate classical music into your daily routine. The type of music we listen to appears to matter. Pop music may not be as beneficial to people as other genres. So research on 1,064 famous North American and European pop stars between 1956 and 1999 shows that their mortality rate was more than 70% higher from 3 to 25 years post-fame than that of the general public. The American and European pop stars died at an average age of 42 and 35, respectively. Although many factors are involved, including drug and alcohol abuse, the type of music and lyrics may play a role in our DNA response. The human lifespan is closely linked with the self-repairing abilities of our genes, and the more powerful our DNA self-repair, the more stable our genes are and the longer we will live. So when we're talking in healthcare world, which is my world, when we're talking about getting you well, yes, we're going to do homeopathy. Yes, we're going to do nutraceuticals. Yes, we're going to do herbs and vitamins and minerals. Yes, we're going to do all that. But we're also going to ask you to make lifestyle changes. Avoid the drama. I mean, drama is a big, big thing. We want to avoid the drama. Um, we want to make sure that we get off sugar. We want to make sure that we don't have any food additives. That means nothing in a box or a package. We want to make sure we don't overdo on caffeine or alcohol. We want to make sure that we understand that if we have a soda, we have a can of soda, we have to have eight, eight ounce glasses of water to neutralize the acid in the uh, soda. What does that mean? Well, cancer lives in an acidic environment. So the more soda we drink, the more acidic our environment is. I mean, you know, you can burn the, you, you clean up your battery corrosion on your car by pouring a can of soda on that. You know you can do that, right? We ladies who clean the toilets in our home, 
if we've got rust in our water, we can pour a can of soda on that rust in the toilet and boom, in five seconds it's gone. So what is that doing to our insides? What is it doing to our gut? Not good. Cancer grows in an acidic environment and see, so we want to make sure that we do not induce that environment. All of us can make lifestyle changes. Incorporating meditation, incorporating listening to classical music is just a couple of things that are not more pills to take, right? These are things that we can do and they're things that we should do. Now, I will just tell you one of my, uh, and, and classical music doesn't have to be boring, okay? Uh, when I say classical music, you might think, oh, uh, elevator music or Muzak, what used to be what was played in elevators and that kind of thing. That's not necessarily what I'm talking about. There was a great Russian composer called Rachmaninoff and his pieces, he's classical, and his pieces are very energetic and they're very powerful and they're very strong. And so you don't have to think that classical music is just boring elevator music or funeral music. And I know a lot of us have that. But there are all kinds of different classical music. And so find one that you like and incorporate that into your uh, meditation processes. Our DNA can respond to our thoughts. Now, a lot of people, you know, will say, and I remember uh, hearing this when I was a little girl, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Well, that is the furthest thing from the truth. Words are vibrational frequencies and words have the power to do damage. Thoughts, these are things that are in your mind before they come out your mouth. They also are things and they have a vibrational frequency and they are very, very powerful. So we think that our thoughts don't matter because they're intangible, but scientists have found extensive evidence that they have real time effect on our DNA, prompting us to reconsider how we perceive our lives. Our perception of life can affect our gene expression as shown by a 2013 study. This study found that two types of happiness, hedonic and eudaimonic, have different effects on gene expression. Now, people who experience hedonic happiness typically feel happy when they engage in activities that provide them with immediate pleasure, such as indulging in a delicious meal or consuming alcohol. In contrast, those who experience eudaimonic happiness tend to derive pleasure from achieving a greater purpose in life, such as contributing to society or helping others. The study found that people who incline toward justice and noble goals have a distinct genetic profile, indicating a greater potential for fighting viruses, including higher interferon gene expression and the increased ability to produce antibodies and a lower expression of inflammation-related genes. So this is powerful. What you think has the ability to modulate the gene expression in your body. And so I know there's a lot of um, positive affirmations. There's a lot of, uh, you know, that kind of uh, talk on the uh, Internet and the social media and that kind of thing. But there is scientific evidence to prove that when we are in a good mood, when we are in a bad mood, those things can affect our gene expression. And we're much better off if we are in the glass half full category than in the, half, the glass half empty category. So in a 2017 study published in Molecular Psychiatry, two gene locations were found to be linked with differences in positive attitudes and well-being among more than 2,500 African-American participants. Regular, moderately intense exercise and consumption of certain foods and nutrients can effectively promote self-healing and improve DNA as well. So positive thinking improves our DNA. So here are some of the diseases that if this is something that affects you, then meditation is going to be a great uh, tool in your toolbox. So. If I've seen this once, I've seen it a million times, anxiety. Almost everybody is dealing with anxiety. Uh, maybe it's your health, maybe it's your finances, maybe it's your family situation. It doesn't really matter. Anxiety is an absolute killer. Asthma, cancer, chronic pain, depression, heart disease, high blood pressure, 
irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's, sleep problems, and tension headaches. Now, all of those diseases can be helped by meditation. So you might just think that meditation is you just sit in the chair and be quiet and let your mind wander. That's not quite what it is. You do want to be in a comfortable position. You can lie down. You can sit down. When I do, I do meditations almost every day. I usually am sitting at my dinner table. That's where I pray. That's where I kind of do all my Bible reading and that kind of thing. And that's also where I meditate. You can do guided meditations. You know, you'll have somebody do it in a group and somebody says, think of this, visualize this, think of, you know, one of the things that with cancer patients, uh, the doctors will say, um, visualize your white blood cells because we know that your white blood cells are part of your immune system. Visualize your white blood cells being warriors. Visualize your white blood cells attacking the cancer cells. Visualize your white blood cells winning over the cancer cell. So that is kind of a guided meditation that somebody can help you through. Um, affirmations, positive affirmations. Uh, one of the things that I do because I am a Christian and I believe that the Word of God is very powerful, I will do positive affirmations with Scripture. When I meditate, I meditate on Scripture. Now, you don't have to do that. You can meditate on anything you want to meditate on. But that's what I particularly do in my life, and I'm just here to tell you, I have not been sick in probably, I can't remember the last time I was sick, certainly 40 years. So just take that for what that's worth. You can do a mantra meditation. This is the type of meditation where you repeat a calming word, a thought, or a phrase to keep out unwanted thoughts. So when I do my scriptural meditation, it's like a mantra meditation. I just repeat the scripture over and over and over and over and over until it gets real, really down deep in my DNA. So that is called a mantra meditation. You can also do a mindfulness meditation. This is the type of meditation where you, um, you just, you decide that you're mindful. I'm going to be more aware and present in today's moment. So part of that might look like oh my gosh, the bank just called in my note. I don't know what I'm going to do. And so you just get these runaway thoughts there. Well, mindfulness would be, what is the worst that can happen? What else might happen? Well, you might be able to restructure the loan or you might be able to, you know, sell something or you might be able to whatever, whatever. you know, you're going to have to do that mindful meditation on the positive possibilities to keep out those unwanted thoughts. In mindfulness medica meditation, you focus on one thing, all right, and that is the, it can be the lighting in the room, it can be the flow of your breath, it can be that you're concentrating on your thoughts, and it's like, oh, this thought is not a good thought, this thought is not a healthy thought, we need to replace this thought with this other positive thought. All of that is mindful meditation. You can also do Qigong, which is a Chinese practice of exercise. You can also do Tai Chi, uh, which is another type of exercise, which is very calming to the body. You can also do structured breathing. Now, I do this a lot. Um, you breathe in for four seconds. You hold for four seconds. You breathe out for four seconds. You hold for four seconds. And so you'll do... Um, around, it's called breathing a cube or breathing, you know, square breathing. That It goes by different names. And there's other different ways that you can structure your breath. But the main thing is that you're breathing deeply from the diaphragm. You're not breathing here from the top of your lungs. You're breathing down deep. And what that does is it regulates your heart. It regulates your blood pressure. It helps with anxious thoughts. It helps with um, depression. It helps with a lot of things. And so we want to be able to do that. Because we all can get anxious. We all can have these kind of thoughts. And we all want to um, improve our DNA and improve the repair of our DNA. So all that's really, really important. And these are some things that you can do very, very effortlessly. You don't have to go and pay somebody to do anything. You don't have to buy supplements. You don't have to do all that kind of stuff, which all of that is good. And I totally believe in that. But if you just incorporated the uh, mindfulness, if you just incorporated meditation, if you just incorporated uh, classical music, then 
you're going to see some good things happen in your health. And if you're very, very sick, I definitely would put on classical music in the evening and just let your body start to do what it needs to do. So you want to be in a relaxed atmosphere. You don't want to be like, oh, I'm going to be doing this meditation. Somebody's going to walk in and all that. No, you don't want to do that. You want to get in a place where you're very, very comfortable. And you want to be open-minded, all right? So when thoughts come to you, if they're positive thoughts, you can dwell on them. But if they're negative thoughts, you want to replace them with positive thoughts. So these are some different ways. There's more ways. You can Google the ways that you can do meditation. Things are going to be different for different ones. Me, I do the mantra med meditation mostly. I do the breathing in the square mostly. I do uh, scriptural uh, mantras because that's just what I have found works for me. And so classical music is also something we can do. There's a company called uh, Healing Tones. I don't know if you've heard of it, but you can uh, go on. Uh, you can go on the internet. And you can uh, search for healing tones. You can buy them. There, I think there's six CDs. I bought them. I absolutely love them. I play them all the time. I brought them into the clinic, and my staff absolutely hated them. And so that's going to tell you some things, okay? Because my staff at the time was not very healthy. But just throwing that out there, uh, you can buy those and you can put those on. They're very, very nice. They're very relaxing. Or you can just go to your search engine and you can. Uh, search for healing frequencies. And these are different frequencies. Now, it's not classical music, but it is different tones that will help your body heal and help you repair your DNA. And I think that you can even find it healing frequencies for digestion, healing frequencies for heart, healing frequencies for circulation, all that kind of stuff. So you can kind of tailor it to what your body needs. So, my time is up. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting. And we will be back next week. It is the weekend. It's getting warmer outside. So we want you to just enjoy being with nature, being outside, grounding, getting some sunshine, all that kind of stuff. You're going to have to watch out for the mosquitoes because we've had so much rain. But those are things that you can do to rest, recover, and restore. And I will see you next Friday.